Hello friends, welcome to my Royal Family News Channel. Before moving on to the video, if you are not subscribed to my channel, do not forget to subscribe and turn on notifications, so let's move on to the video. There may be some debate about whether the crown has already slipped with King Charles. He has worked hard to simulate his role as a king, but no one can quite get everything right and the question becomes are any false SC threatens a blind eye worth? It's only natural to feel a little bit sad about the recent passing of our great Queen Elizabeth II, right after all this happened she had a way of sizing up situations, understanding when to keep her own counsel and when to speak out from the front. Upon reflection, it is easy to see that Elizabethan age turned out to be a stellar reign. Queen Elizabeth was great at the job, and handled all of which came with it effortlessly. To us she was a comfortingly familiar figure from an era gone by when the monarch took their duty seriously, above party politics and deliberately avoiding doing anything to cause offense. Whilst her comments at garden parties may have been the comparatively mild how very rude etc., there was a detachment which many liked. She showed flashes of personality, but that's all they were, the flashes. But, given what has happened this week, there may be an argument that King Charles should do something similar. Is not it a fine line to draw? Do you agree with me? And that is it, really. King Charles has been thrown into a new epoch tipped upside down, his outspoken predisposition has been shed more light upon his disdainful comments on issues to do with architecture, climate, and other many issues. He has always been vocal but as a king, people expect him to be quiet. The question is, however, what do real people have to do with architecture, the climate desk, or any other high-level idea being discussed by Charles? They are too busy worrying about the high cost of bread and how its cost can add up to a normal household bill. Many may say, why do I want to listen to someone talking about the climate and what the hell am I going to pay my next bill with, this is where King Charles squats. I think he has been receiving poor advice on how to deal with the situation. The United Kingdom is experiencing unrest notably, riots, and strikes, the people want to take control of their country. It is understandable the root is the the written expression promises made during the Brexit campaign. A scenario everyone hoped would be realized as per the expectations people nurtured. However, we have uncontrolled foreigners landing on our country, and small boats have already got us off. By all means, things are getter sour and an Englishman who has been paying tax to feed an immigrant finds it hard to survive. There are riots on the street fighting to take control back from the police. Sir Keir Starmer, the incumbent prime minister, is having a tough time dealing with the mess. It seems the time for both monarchy and government has come to connect further on the ground. The situation is even more nuanced when one considers that some opine a conciliated statement from the of King Charles would be enough in order to ease tensions. Coming as it does when few people realize that Sir Keir Starmer is due in Balmoral this weekend to see the King a time-honored moment for the Queen and serving Prime Minister to discuss certain issues. Do you see what I mean? Or to literally be more explicit about this, who would you rather have, King Charles or Sir Keir Starmer? If you support King Charles, comment number one and if Sir Keir Starmer, number two. Charles also has to remember who he is, a defender of the faith. I am just suggesting that the king is not mistaken for one more time zone or regime, and that British culture has profound roots in Christian traditions, whether or not anyone takes them too seriously. Getting back to business, Previous leaders like Margaret Thatcher and Sherry Blair discovered Balmoral intensely stale with neither of them profiting from their time there. That said, I wonder how Balmoral will go down with someone like Sir Keir Starmer who is no big royalist. Curiously it is a directive to number 10 that by all means Charles should deliver some offending or other message, and if he did time would either stand still or the sky will fall in, yet which signally ends not just with failure but almost spectacular rout. The difficulty matters even further, because this misstep become more damning to Charles. Indeed, the question of what I know about real life becomes quite relevant because many people face their daily concerns, they cannot easily obtain a hospital appointment, they struggle to find ways to move on, and many more. When these and similar challenges are part of the reality of people's lives, they often feel ignored, 
despised, abandoned by the people of authorities, be it royalty and politicians. However, this brings us to an earlier point, the approach of King Charles significantly contrasts that of his mother, Queen Elizabeth II, who always tried to distance herself from politically sensitive matters. She knew the importance of neutrality and being above the daily matters. For instance, addressing a group of people after several children were murdered was against safety protocol. Charles actually wanted to go to Southport and shake people's hands, yet was told it would put too much strain on local police and the government would be unable to make enough security present. This contrasts with the prime minister who was seen quickly exiting a group of young sunburnt boys without any kind words, then drawn to a group of young boys inside a mosque for a meeting. This illustrates a broader trend, people will get angry if they feel ignored and the monarchy will always be the scapegoat. Charles should be careful in not getting dragged into these situations to avoid appearing as if he takes sides. The apolitical stance his presence must maintain is vital during these times to avoid losing total British respect. While may a few do in fact act violently and idiotic behavior should never be acceptable, the fact is that the king must remain above conflict to ensure the monarchy does not simply become another source of division. Indeed, the question of racism and violence is abhorrent, no one should justify killing innocent, well-educated professionals such as nurses. It is up to those in power, including the king, to ensure that such behavior is widely condemned, at least implicitly through indirect action. You are absolutely right to point out the nuances presented by the monarchy. The NHS is an essential institution, and one that would not be able to function without the people who work within it. The vast majority of people in Britain do not support far-right ideologies, but they do support the right to peaceful protest. One of the reasons this was such a peaceful event was because the demonstrators' message was clear, and they did not resort to common violence. Thus, our protest does not provoke chaos, but debate, and therein lies the distinction. For example, the late Queen Elizabeth II was so beloved because of her impartiality. Her independent political views made her the queen for everybody, regardless of their biology. King Charles III should contain this freedom to choose because his role is above politics. As monarch, he does not stand for a vocal minority, but the entire nation at once. I must say that the standards set by Queen Elizabeth are extraordinary and that perhaps it would be unfair for anyone to try to achieve them. However, we should not abandon hope in Charlie either. He is smart, kind, and capable, and his tiny mistakes do nothing to diminish that. His actions are a lesson to call politicians, who completely lack the standards that our monarch should represent. As British citizens, it is our responsibility to do better, perform our duties, and support our institutions. The vicious animal that is the media will mudsling at this event and undoubtedly call Charles a murderer, but only because they do not have the decency to grasp the entire context. It is important for us to discuss it decently. I read some of the comments you have sent me, and I must say that from an American perspective, it is easy for you to write about this. I understand that what the monarchy is to me is probably not the same to you, but one must understand that the monarchy is the pillar of our history and our tradition. You are welcome to have an opinion, but those that wish to criticize should comprehend our system. Mutual respect for other people's culture and tradition is what fosters civilized debate. Those who do such thing must complain about not securing appointments. These people prop up the National Health Service. This makes millions of British people who share these extreme right-wing beliefs. But, if they were not violent and defined what was at stake a lot of people would back to peaceful protests. Impartiality was the goddess's only defining characteristic, her lack of partial bias made even ugly ones admire. She was merely impartial and truly the queen of all. Ideally, King Charles III should avoid party politics. Just like his extraordinary late mother he serves as the head of state for whole nation, not merely part querulous the Venezuela government disconnected from reality elite. Her Majesty who is no longer with us would have been an impossible act for anyone to follow. However, what we need to do is keep our faith and give a positive review. His Majesty, the king is indeed a magnificently bright and kind working king, 
who has slipped up from time to time of course, that does not make him any less great. And responsible politicians should always be under such severe and relentless standards of perfection. First and foremost, we have responsibilities as British citizens to meet. I agree that sensationalist videos like this were in bad taste. This is to suggest that they malign the character of King Charles and throw his behavior into question, with no respect for standing. In the US, however, I am amazed that some Americans feel they can weigh in on our king and other British issues so matter-of-factly when they seem not to understand what monarchies are all about or how things work. I should clarify that I am not bashing Americans. All I want to do is say to a few individuals that if you are going to criticize our king, get us three-fourths we the people in this monarchy world, tradition and culture. We still honor your culture. Always maintain civility and learn from the way you articulate things. I see your point. Indeed, the role of the king in British society in general, and especially the head of the Church of England, is not to take care of such political points as immigration, the economy, or legal rights either. These are considered the government's present functions. Therefore, when King Charles applauded the compassion and embodied anti-racism spirit of the British, he acted as a good monarch should have, urging his people to peace and trying to be an imitation for them, which is unlike being political. No doubt, the late Queen Elizabeth II was a grandmother to many in her later years. The fact that Elizabeth II did not make large public speeches is one of the things. It is difficult to find the right words after such actions like the assassination of superior personalities. As for King Charles, it may turn out that staying silent is no longer an option, but the method to speak could be finding how to do so speaks unites world leaders. Also, I wish Britain and British people could become calm and move forward to promote dialogue or solutions, for I hope they would prevent chaos and self-destructive behavior. Prince Harry seems to be expressing personal animosity, mostly to Meghan, who appears slighted by not being as famous as Catherine. It is doubtlessly quite a difficult time, especially for Harry, as he leaves abroad. It should be quite difficult. As such, it is not essential for King Charles to be in control or influence of his nearly 40-year-old son, particularly since Harry lives in another country. It seems like an unfortunate state as it is difficult for him to intervene yet even more challenging not to. It may be that with a king dying and one ascending to the throne, these complicated kinships need new titles and new approaches. This case is an example of what happens when the demands of one family interfere with the requirements of loyalty. The phrase how sharper than a serpent's tooth it is to have a thankless child aptly captures the pain King Charles might feel in dealing with the challenges presented by Prince Harry. It's clear that the king is managing the situation as best he can, keeping Harry at a distance to minimize the impact of his actions on the royal family. What Harry does in his private life, especially in the US, is indeed beyond the direct control of his father. Your observation about the irony of figures like Meghan Markle lecturing on climate change while using private planes highlights a broader issue of public perception. It can make the entire discussion around climate change seem hypocritical or less credible. Given this, it might be wise for King Charles to step back from overtly political topics like climate control, focusing instead on his role as a unifying figure who offers comfort and guidance to his people. This approach would also be beneficial for Prince William, as unity and consensus are essential for the country's continued development. When viewed through a more human lens, King Charles's life has been one of dedicated public service. He established the Prince's Trust, one of the most successful charities globally, using his Navy severance pay. His steadfast support for farmers, craftspeople, and other communities reflects his deep commitment to the nation. Despite facing constant criticism and mockery, often with unfounded accusations, King Charles has remained focused on his royal duties. He is frequently seen engaging with people from all walks of life, demonstrating generosity and warmth. His regular attendance at the Church of England every Sunday underscores his commitment to both his faith and his role as a moral leader. King Charles's lifelong dedication to service and his efforts to connect with the British people are commendable. 
By focusing on these strengths and avoiding politically charged issues, he can continue to be a unifying and comforting presence in the nation, much like his late mother, Queen Elizabeth II. That's it for our video my friends, I hope you have liked it, please let me know your thoughts in the comments, and like the video. If you haven't done so yet if you want to be first to be informed about my content, please subscribe to the channel and make sure you turn on notifications. Thank you for spending this time with me, take care of yourself and stay healthy, I'll see you in the next one.